Today we're going to get started on painting our backdrop for our textured wool project. When you get your sheet of paper, fold it in half, the hot dog fold, and start by drawing about four to six trees on the top half of your paper. They don't have to be realistic trees, we're just going to keep them a little simpler, a little abstract. You're going to get some paint that um, has some different colors around the white. And I just started out making all of mine as a tint. Remember what a tint is when we did our, um, our other projects? A tint is a color plus white. So I'm going to be doing a lot of that for making these colors remind us of spring. Taking some of those colors and highlighting them and making them a little lighter. So I am quickly, literally, very quickly, grabbing a big brush, not worrying about staying inside the lines perfectly, but I'm trying to get the color on in a fast amount of time to get the sky so that it looks blue. When I'm done painting, wash out your brush really good and dry it in that towel. Make sure that it's dried really well. When you have your next color, again, mix it a little bit, because you're not gonna need a ton, just a little bit to um, paint your tree. Again, wash and dry before you dip it into the new color. Remember, it's always important to dry out your brush just in case it has any leftover paint in there and because we don't want our paint to be thin with extra water. So go ahead and please paint all of your trees using a tint of whatever color you've got on your plate. Notice my painting tray. When I paint it, you'll notice I did not mix every single color together. You'll notice that there's piles of colors, but the whole thing should not be mixed. Now, let's move on to the ground. When you start working on the ground, you'll notice that I'm painting the whole thing yellow. I grabbed a really big paintbrush. I'm completely painting the whole ground yellow. Once I've done that, wash out my brush, dry my brush, just like I did before, and I'm going to add in the green paint right on top. You mean when it's still wet? You bet. Take that green paint, let paint it all on top of your yellow, and it's okay if your colors mix a little bit. That's totally okay. Now that you've got yellow down low on the paper and green on top, I'm gonna wash out my brush just like before and use the end of my brush to make it look like textured grass down on the bottom. So that yellow paint was more like a base color. It's a color that I'm using to not only mix with my green, but also allow you to see the blades of grass that you can create by using the end of your paintbrush. I think it does a really nice job of making a visual texture. It really does start to look like grass. Now set this aside to dry. Now as that's drying, let's go ahead and start making some lamb's body. If you want to use the texture or the plates that I've got available, the um, shapes, you can use that or if you'd like, feel more comfortable drawing out your own, that's totally great too. Um, I wanted you to make your lamb's bodies as close together as possible so we're not wasting paper. And as you've got three of them cut out, we're going to be using these lambs then um, and adding the rest of the body pieces together. There's also some templates, a triangle for the head, an oval for the ears. Notice I'm drawing three of them, three triangles and three ovals. Once you've drawn around them, take your scissors and cut them out. You see, the ovals are going to be used for the ears. I'll cut the ovals in a half in just a moment. The triangles are going to be used for the heads of um, your lambs. Okay, let's get some glue, add it on, and stick that where you'd like to place for your heads. You'll notice that the sheep can go any direction. Um, you can mix it up or change it how you'd like. And as you've got the heads glued on, this is what I'm talking about for the ears. Cut the ovals in half. When you glue them on, they're not like cat ears. They should not stick at the top of the head, but more at the sides of the head to make it look like lamb ears. Again, we're gonna take our ovals, cut them in half, and glue them to the sides of the lamb's head. 
to the sides. Set that aside and um, we'll continue working on some textures. When I started making my lamb's wool, I wanted to start making some actual textures that you could feel. So I took my piece of paper and I folded it at the beginning and wrapped the leftover around those fold lines. You can fold it and roll it any way that it works best for you. You can see that my spirals even come apart just a little bit. So if that happens to you, that's okay. I'm gonna get a little closer so you can see this in action. One of them starting to move a little bit. Um, but at any rate, I'm just going to be um, pausing the video so you can see what it looks like by the time it's done. For the second one, and you, when you use cotton, try to spread it out. My goal is not to put on five or six pieces of cotton, but to spread it out. And lastly, on my third lamb, I'm just applying some extra yarn that I could use to um, provide texture for my third lamb. Now that I'm done with my lamps, I'm gonna set those aside. I'd like to take these, this painting and start making my trees look like real trees that we saw in the story, Lily Wool. With my black oil pastel, I'm outlining and adding in some branches and tree trunks. And then I'll go ahead and glue my lamb onto my piece of paper. The black oil pastel makes for great legs. Or maybe your lamb is laying down in the grass where you don't have to draw legs. I know I had fun making textures into this lily wool project. Thanks everyone.